Peace everyone, I'm Mascard here and welcome back to the Drawing Journal. Alright, so I hope everybody had a lovely holiday weekend. I know I did. I was a super bum. I didn't do a gosh darn thing. I barely even left the bed. All I did was watch TV and eat all day with my lovely fiance, which was fantastic. Pretty much the ideal way to spend the weekend. Anyways, getting back to this drawing here that I've been working on the past couple weeks, coloring. Um, I'm going to do the socks today, which I hope to be quite fun because they're going to be pretty detailed in comparison to the rest of the clothes. But anyways, I'm going to start off with this pink color. Um, so uh, the end of the year is coming very quickly. I hope everybody um, has fun. Uh, New Year's and stuff like that, stay safe and everything. Um, I have just as much plans for New Year's as I did for Christmas and whatnot, which is nothing. Um, but I took most of last week off and pretty much did nothing. However, I did make one video that will go up tomorrow actually and I'm pretty excited for it because it's a video that um, that really nobody's asked for except for a couple people and I thought that it would be a good time to do it because I know there's a lot of people that you know make New Year's resolutions and all that fun stuff and um, so the video that I'm making or that I made that will be up tomorrow is kind of a breakdown on how I record my videos, how I do all that stuff, um, my time lapses and stuff that people always give me compliments on my editing skills and whatnot. So yeah, I'm going to have that video up tomorrow, so I'm excited for that. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it and um, hopefully benefit from some of the things I talk about in it. Um, it was pretty it was a pretty hectic process to record and, and make the video. I, I put a lot of effort into the video to make it very educational and kind of break down ways to make better videos, which is really the purpose of the video. And so I'm hoping with the new year, I can um, anticipate seeing better, better videos made by the creators that I follow and the creators that follow me. Um, but other than that, I don't have a whole lot going on. Um, however, so I really anticipated, um, accomplishing my first Patreon goal or, or reaching my first, uh, Patreon goal by this time. I, I really didn't think that it would be so slow, um, considering the amount of work that I've been putting into my channel and everything. However, that's life. Um, so I, I have yet to reach my, my first patron goal. And because of that, I've decided to start a Kickstarter. And the Kickstarter is basically going to um, help me compensate for the fact that I haven't reached that first goal, which is to set up live streaming. Um, I, I don't need a whole lot of equipment to start live streaming, but I want my, I want my live streams to be, um, really nice. I, I don't want them to be, you know, just some cheap webcam and not being able to do two cameras. In order for me to do two cameras, I do need a little bit of hardware to set that up. And, um, yes, so that's, that's one thing. Um, that I've kind of worked on over the weekend a little bit is just setting up a Kickstarter. And it's not live yet. Um, if it is live by the time, I don't know, tomorrow or something like that, then I will probably put the link for the Kickstarter in the description uh, so you can check that out if it's there. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll post it on Facebook and stuff. So if you follow me on Facebook, um, then you'll see it there, but I'll certainly make a, another video 
most likely this week, um, talking about it and whatnot, and just yeah, walking you through it. I know that there's I know there's um, a lot of people that you know they they might not be exactly comfortable with the thought of supporting someone's work on Patreon. Maybe they're not you know the the monthly kind of person. So I think Kickstarter might be a good way for those kind of people to help support my channel without having to worry about some monthly bill or something like that. Um, and I'm extremely grateful for all the people that, that have been supporting my channel on Patreon. I, it, it, it really means a lot and it's, um, it's, I mean, it's helped me tremendously, uh, keep up with everything so far. And, um, yeah, I, I still have a really long way to go, unfortunately. And, um, hopefully the new year will bring in the rest of the support that I need to continue my channel. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to have actually two Kickstarters, but I won't, I won't launch the next one until later next month. Um, and I'll give you more details on that in a future video. But, um, I did have one question. Hold on a second. I had a question. I almost forgot. I put it on my desktop. Oh, so it was a question about shadows and highlights and how I kind of do them, make them. Perhaps I could try to make shorter videos in which I explain how shadows and highlights and stuff. Um, okay, so shadows and highlights. I guess that will be um, a nice topic for this video um, because you can see kind of how I develop the shadows and things on this particular piece. And this is a this is just a two toned piece, um, very classical, um, anime style with just a base color and a shadow color, no highlights in this, like, with the exception of the hair. Um, and the goodness, this is this is not an easy um, an easy topic to just teach. Um, because I've been, I, I've always practiced with the shadows and stuff when I was a kid. Um, that's what I really like to do. I, I mentioned it a long time ago, but I never drew people. I never did any people like like this at all, or even tried to draw people because they, I, they were just so terrible that I avoided drawing people. And even when I started to draw people, which was when I was 14, um, I often would uh, find a way to hide the face because the faces were always so hideous. Um, but what I would do before that is mostly draw inanimate objects in cars and buildings and things. And I always practiced shadows just, just constantly. I, I have some drawings from like when I was like 10 or whatever where I would just draw like a scene where it's like a bench or something. And then I practice drawing the cast shadows from the bench. And really, I, I think what it helped me develop is kind of a sense of 3D. Like in my mind, I could think of objects in 3D and kind of imagine what a light source would be doing um, as, it's, as it's casting a shadow of that three-dimensional object. And I was able to um, develop kind of a skill of projecting a three-dimensional shape on a two-dimensional surface and kind of translating that into a cast shadow. And I just used to practice it all the time. And so now when I do shadows and things, I usually, I'm usually really not um, thinking that much about it. Um, for instance, let's let's take her legs for example. Now, when I 
developed the shading for this picture, um, I simply just, the first thing I thought was, where's my light source coming from? And for this particular piece, if you can see, the light source is somewhat behind her, above her, casting down, kind of off the left side this way. And you can see that where this part is the highlighted part and the shadow part is underneath where the light is coming this way. Same thing with here, the drop shadow from her bow, the drop shadow from all her hair and stuff covering this part is all shadow and her arm here underneath. And um, I haven't done the skirt yet, but you can see the cast shadow from her skirt across her legs. And you can kind of see that I put the shapes in a little bit. And then on the right side of her leg, the shadow is there because the, the, the light source is coming from this direction. And it's usually easier to always just work with like a, a strong um, single light source. It always makes the, the thought process a little bit easier to um, when it comes to developing a light source and working with shadows and highlights. And um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the thought process I go through. And when you're working with when you're working with you know your shadows and stuff, it's always good to kind of have a rough sketch of what the shadows might look like. And like I mentioned when I first started coloring this, I colored it and I I, I did all my shadows and everything um, in Photoshop, so I knew exactly what my shadows were going to look like before I ever drew it down, and I knew that they established a, a good light source and everything looked fine um, before ever actually coloring this piece. So um, I, there's no guesswork involved. Um, you, when you see me draw something in, on video or whatever, I'm not, I'm not making it up as I go. I, I, I always stress like planning and being prepared with whatever you're working on and um, I do it for every piece. I plan every piece and I don't, I'm not guessing. Um, even the color that I'm drawing with right now, I, I used a little piece of paper. See, I used a little piece of paper and determined what the color was going to look like and um, yeah, so no guesswork. So when it comes to shadows, it's the same thing. Shadows and highlights, um, there's no guesswork involved. It, it's a, it's a, it's a bit easier to do the guesswork um, when you're working in an unfor when you're working with a forgivable medium. I mean, if I put a marker down, there's no erasing it, so I, I there can't be no guesswork. I have to be um, prepared. I have to plan it out and make sure that the color that I'm using is the correct is the correct color. Um, so that's that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I've, I've made a few videos, I think, um, kind of talking about working in 3D and kind of ways to help think about things in 3D. Um, if you, if you really want to kind of, um, help yourself progress in that manner, then you might think about learning, um, perspective, like one point, two point perspective. Um, that helps you grasp the, the concept of 3D much, much easier. And that's actually one of the first things that I ever learned um, was uh, perspective. Like I said, I didn't draw people for a very, very long time. Um, so I, I learned a bunch of other techniques like perspective. And I think that I... I I think that every artist needs to learn perspective in their lifetime. Um, they, with the, you know, the vanishing points and the horizon line, you have to understand that kind of stuff. You just can't skip fundamentals like that. You have to take the time to understand it and learn it. And, and the importance of it nece isn't necessarily like being able to do it, but, um, being able to understand it. It's much more important for your mind to be able to understand developing perspective on a two-dimensional field, like a piece of paper, than it is actually being able to do it. I mean, 
I don't remember the last time I used perspective, to be honest with you. Um, in, in, in the sense of like a cityscape landscape kind of way. Um, so it's not the most important skill for me on an everyday piece, but it is extremely important for my mind to be able to understand it. Because if you can, if you can have um, a good, if you can have a good like mental capacity of understanding perspective, then you're you're going to notice things that are incorrect much much easier. And I think that's really important. When you look at something, you're like, you know, there's something off with that, but you, you, you can't figure out what's off about it. Usually that's just a lack of knowledge of perspective or proportions. For instance, drawing people, if you're looking at a drawing of a person that you did and you're looking at it and you're like, you know, there's just something off about it, but you, you can't pinpoint what it is. It's not because you're you know, bad artist. You're an inexperienced art or artist. Um, when you when you draw something and you look at it and you just think, you know, there's something off about it and you can't figure out what it is, that's a lack of experience and knowledge that keeps you from pinpointing what it is that's not um, correct about it. And you have to you have to learn the fundamentals of the subject that you're doing in order for you to be able to pinpoint the source of what doesn't look right. So it's, it's always, it's always a good idea to learn as much art as you can, even if you don't think you're going to really use it all that much. I, I think that's what I kind of liked about, um, art class in school, you know, like elementary school and high school and stuff where they don't really, you know, they're not really teaching you art in the broad sense. They're just kind of, you know, put you in a class and give you projects to do in random mediums. But um, it's good to have a well-grounded um, experience with all kinds of different things. Um, so that's what I kind of like about art school and class and stuff in high school and elementary school is it, it gave me a really good base experience for a bunch of different things. But, um, yeah, so hopefully that's, uh, some helpful advice for some of you that are struggling with fixing some of your pieces. You know, it's always nice to experiment with different mediums, too. It, it always gives you, you know, I, I didn't work with oil paint until, until I was 23 or something like that. So, like, four years ago was the first time I ever oil painted. Um, and it immediately became my favorite medium to work in. Unfortunately, I don't really have the space or the finances to... Um, set up such a studio um, and I'd love to get back to oil painting but uh, yeah I have to work with the cheaper mediums right now but I would I can't wait to get back to it because it's my favorite medium to work in it's it's just uh, I feel like it's just the pinnacle of art in my opinion oil paint is just my favorite but uh, I would have never known that unless I took an art until unless I took a painting class. You know, I was I needed to be a full time student, and I was like, you know, I can already draw a little bit, so I took a painting class, and uh, we did oil paint, and I immediately just was like, how have I gone this this far in my life and never oil painted before? So you, sometimes you don't even know what your favorite medium is until you discover it by accident. So, you know, there's no reason to keep waiting. Just jump in, just even if you don't know how to use it, just get it and try it or take a class or something. Buy a starter kit, do whatever you need to, to start doing what? Something new.
And I, I think the same goes for the, like the, you know, the shadows and highlights. You know, if you're just try something new with it. I'm, I'm sure there's people that have, you know, other ideas or thoughts on um, how to approach shadows and highlights. Um, I would say like if it's if it's coloring, if it's finding the colors for shadows and highlights, then um, then I recommend you know playing with it digitally, where you can instantly change the shadows and highlight color. You know, put the shadows on a different layer, and then use your hue saturation bar to just shift it around and find that color, find the color that you want. I'm pretty much done with the socks. Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing any more details to it. This is exactly what I wanted the socks to look like. Um, super detailed and fun. They, they don't, uh, I might have picked the wrong colors for the markers, but I don't know. Maybe once I color the rest of the piece, it will look a little bit nicer. But I feel like the, um, the socks are a bit too pink. Maybe, maybe just a bit too much pink. I, I kind of intended them to be more maroon red looking, um, but that pink color just qu didn't quite, um, it looked a little bit more pink there. Maybe I should have put another layer, but lesson learned. I think it will still work out. Um, Cause yeah, once I color that, it will look, it will come together much nicer. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this video. Again, I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend, and I hope you have a, a nice week. Uh, stay safe for New Year's and all that fun stuff. And um, I, I might do another drawing journal this week because, like I mentioned last week, I didn't do um, I didn't do anything. I kind of took a break, uh, and so I don't have any videos past Tuesday for this week. So I'm going to work on some stuff um, this week for next week's videos. Um, but I might, I might sneak in another drawing journal later this week. So if you have any questions about art or anything really, any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to get to them in these videos and answer them the best that I can. And it, it helps me think of things to talk about. So um, it's much more of a benefit to me than it is to you probably. But anyway, um, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Peace.